Climate Change Committee is not a normal committee. It's one that's basically been deciding and directing our government's net zero policy uh, for quite some time. Uh, this is the policy, of course, that means that we are going to have, although they don't like to tell us too much about it, uh, huge big tax rises and um, huge big changes to our lives and what we can do uh, entirely based on achieving net zero targets that the government and parliament signed up to. Uh, this is, by the way, all on top of paying for the £400 billion of debt uh, from the last year of lockdown. But the Environment Audit Committee pointed out there was, a, in particular, one huge cost when it came to proposals uh, to affect uh, what homes can and cannot be sold. Well, to explain it all is Harry Wilkinson. He's Head of Policy at the Global Warming Policy Foundation and joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. It was unusual to see a government, as a parliamentary committee uh, actually criticising a so-called green policy. Um, and this green policy is from the Climate Change Committee. And what does it propose? Yeah, so this policy is all about decarbonising housing. So that's getting the emissions that's generated in people's homes uh, down, really, so we can achieve the net zero emissions target um, by 2050. So that means everyone has to meet a higher energy efficiency standard. And there's things called energy performance standard bands. And this is to get every house up to band C, which is sort of be, has been designated the minimum acceptable uh, energy efficiency standard and the environmental audit committee has worked out that this is going to cost eighteen thousand pounds per household um, and that's across 19 million homes well well let's stop by saying an so it's an average of eighteen thousand pounds and it's 19 million homes so i mean that's right uh, that's, that's most homes. homes in this country is it not most homes. And so in total, that's £342 billion pounds in comparison with a government estimate of 35 to 65 billion pounds. I mean, 35 to 65 billion pounds is enough, but I, I'm just going to look down the back of the sofa and just see if we've got that spare few hundred billion. Um, but this is, I mean, these numbers are ridiculous. They're absurd. The idea that most people when selling their home, I mean, people are dealing with paying the lawyers, uh, paying for searches at the local council. They're paying the stamp duty in normal times. Uh, they're dealing with, you know, all the removal costs and, and all the costs of, you know, moving in somewhere where might need some basic redecoration just to make it livable. All of those extra costs people are, are spending at the, a, a crucial time for them you know taking out a mortgage to pay for a lot of it and we're suggesting that people have to well we're suggesting this this committee is advising the government that we should actually have a a, a responsibility to spend on average 18 grand uh, to make the home uh you know supposedly green um how on earth did the the committee come up with a different number that is so different from that yeah. which the government came up with well, I think it's a testament to the madness of the climate change uh, policy debates that we can speak so casually about throwing tens, hundreds of billion pounds um, away on what are really unnecessary and expensive uh, policies. The Environmental Audit Committee has actually done a service because they've gone uh, to a variety of experts to seek evidence about how much this would actually cost. Now, this is the cost of meeting what is the government policy to achieve net zero. So this is going to cost a lot of money. Uh, and they've got the expert advice, which has told them that if you want to meet these exacting uh, energy efficiency standards, then the kind of upgrades that you would have to make to your house, whether that be through uh, sort of cavity wall insulation, loft insulation, um, sort of uh, windows being double, triple glazed. These are all very expensive changes uh, that are gonna have to be made. So at least this committee uh, is give, putting forward slightly more honest estimates. Well, and, and that's it, I mean, including, for, for instance, replacing gas boilers. One of the way, we're not gonna meet net zero unless everyone's gas boiler is, uh, is replaced with electric heat pump. And that could cost huge, huge, huge sums of money. Heat pump could add 5,000 pounds to the total. I mean. I've got to be honest, I've always said, you know, you, you can take my thermostat from my gas boiler and stay, take away from me from my, my cold, dead hands. They will be cold and dead because no one is no one is coming into my house to take it. But these are these are this is the reality. Isn't it? And we're, we're very much obsessed with with covid and with lockdown um, and, and, and you know, in the culture wars that are going on at the moment. I always thought after Brexit, the next battle was going to be uh, over the net zero policy. And yet that sort of got waved through by Parliament, including by a Tory government, waved it through. And it was only 
only when, um, I mean, one of the few decent things Philip Hammond ever did, when he was Chancellor, he actually uh, later on, po you know, actually published the an, in the actual amount of money that had been estimated for this net zero to cost. And, and it started at a trillion. I mean, you you at the foundation, you estimated it costing far more than even the Treasury had said. But at no point did MPs discuss how they were going to raise all this money because either the, either people are going to have to pay for this themselves or the government is going to provide money for it and that has to come from taxes. So what taxes are going to go up to pay for it if we're not paying for it ourselves and how are we supposed to afford to pay for it ourselves? That's right. I think COVID has brought in huge restrictions on people's lives and uh, COVID um, is going to be a way in which we can't actually move on from these restrictions because we're gonna, they're gonna, the government are going to find new reasons uh, to, to impose restrictions on people's lives. And those are going to be uh, climate change related. And so all sorts of taxes are going to have to go up. They won't actually tell us which ones. I wish that I knew that. Uh, and we're told this is all part of the green industrial uh, revolution. Yep. However, with, they're talking about banning gas boilers. Now, in the Industrial Revolution, they didn't have to ban the horse to make people <laughs> use cars and trains. They didn't have to ban sort of manual labor of, uh, of clothes and garments uh, and to make them use machines. These things were adopted because they, they helped people to do these tasks more efficiently. Yeah. So this is not a green Industrial re Revolution. This is actually revolutionary deindustrialization by extreme climate activists who seem to have taken control um, of the heart of Westminster. And there's no scrutiny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm no... with you. I'm going to leave it there. I could talk to you about this. I mean, again, I would, I would have thought we'd have spent this year talking about this big issue as it came forward. But no, apparently we've got this more matter of a lockdown and a pandemic to talk about. But uh, um, you're doing great work there, Harry. Harry Wilkinson, Head of Policy at the Global Warming Policy Foundation. Again, this is an independent parliamentary committee saying this. Uh, Bobby Friedman, final word from you on that. Exactly the sort of thing that we would be spending.